versus film. Hi, I'm Graham. Welcome back to Man vs. Film. It's November already, so that means one thing and one thing only. Time for another Netflix Top 10. Straight in at number 10 for movies that you can watch this month, for me, absolutely, is Hudson Hawk. Hudson Hawk stars Bruce Willis, Danny Aiello, Richard D. Grant, Andy McDowell, James Coburn, and a host of other people that are fantastic in this movie. This movie was a complete bomb when it first came out. I loved it ever since then. I remember seeing this and thinking it was a fantastic movie. The director of this did 40 Days and 40 Nights with Joyce Hartnett. He also did the fantastic Heathers, which I may talk about later or later on. We'll see about that. Um, and it's basically about a cat burglar played by Bruce Willis who has to steal various works of art by Leonardo da Vinci that's going to lead to some great machine that makes gold out of lead or something like that. I don't really care. It was just a fun movie where the criminals in it sang songs to keep time. Sounds wacky? It is, but you should definitely check it out. It's a great comedy, great movie, with some cool action and some Bruce Willis action when he actually seemed to care about acting. Straight at number nine, The Adams Family, directed by Barry Sonnenfeld. You've probably seen this, but have you seen it recently? Probably not, like me. I watched it and I loved the hell out of it. The production values, the actors, everything is pitch perfect in this movie. It stars Raul Jr. Christopher Lloyd, Angelica Houston, Christina Ritchie. It's got a great cast and it is a work of art. It is a fantastic movie and really showed Barry Sonnenfeld's really quirky, weird side that he would later go on and do Men in Black, One, Two, Three, uh, Big Trouble. The kind of movies that are Get Shorty, but this was definitely one of his best. I'm have to wait up between this and Get Shorty, which one I prefer most, and it is extremely hard. Now, it's kind of gothic, kooky, crazy, with some real funny laughs in it, and the performances are all fantastic. It's a movie that you can just throw on, chill out, and realise how much you enjoyed this movie to start off with. Remember back at number 10 when I said we'd be talking about a movie later on? Well, this is that time, and this movie is Heathers. If you haven't seen Heathers, you haven't lived. You have to watch this movie. This is one of the seminal movies I watched when I was growing up, and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. It stars Christian Slater, Winona Ryder, and Shannon Doherty, and it's basically about a clique in a school. Three girls called Heather who rule the school with iron fists. This guy called JD, played by Christian Slater, is a bit quirky, a little on the dark side, and he so he pairs up with Winona Ryder's Veronica character and together they hatch this plan of culling off the three heathers. And it's all a bit of fun in that and just chit chat until JD takes it too far and starts to pick off the heathers one by one trying to rid the school of its patriarchal bitches. Great movie, great story, great thematics within the film and it's just something that has to be seen. You have to watch this, you should be checking this out right now. Straight in at number 8 is Red Eye, directed by Wes Craven, a man notable for his horrors, but this is a really extremely thrilling thriller. An extremely thrilling thriller. Yeah, I like that. It stars Cillian Murphy and Rachel McAdams as two people on a plane that bump into each other. A little bit of chemistry, you feel something's going to happen there, and then it all takes a turn for the worst. It turns out that Cillian Murphy's character, he is there to blackmail her and to help him to kill a politician. And it's basically based on this flight from one place to another place where they're enclosed in one place, and the story just continues around about that. Is she going to have to do what he asks? Is he going to get away with it? Who knows? You need to watch a movie to find out. Number six on my list is a movie that's not for everybody and that is Hobo with a Shotgun. Pretty much the whole plot of the movie is in the title. It's about a hobo played by Rutger Hauer and he has a shotgun. And he shoots people with a shotgun. Lots of people with a shotgun. There's blood, there's over the top gore, very reminiscent of Evil Dead 2. It's one of these movies that came out of Grindhouse, the movie that Tarantino and Rodriguez did where they had asked for like fake trailers. This is one of the movies that came out from that. And it's a very particular taste. You'll know within minutes if this movie's for you or not. But that's the great thing about Netflix. You can throw on a movie within five minutes, go, nope, not for me, delete, one star, you won't have to hear about it again. But I've watched it a couple of times now and it is completely quirky, completely ludicrous, over the top violence, over the top gore blood. I've came around, I really do like it now. First of all, wasn't too sure, now I like it. Number five, 
What We Do in the Shadows. What We Do in the Shadows is a mockumentary based around this group of vampires who allow a documentary crew in to just document their day-to-day -day life. Now, there's like various uh, levels of vampires in here. And you've got the overly nice one who tries to please everybody. You've got the one who's super sexual, who just wants to like, sleep with everybody and drink all their blood. And then you've got the young upstart who's a bit of a rebel. And then you've got the older, decrepit Nosferatu type vampire who just lives in the basement and just uh, lives in the medieval ages. And it's basically these people try to work society around to their way to get victims and they've got this big meetup of vampires and it is a hilarious movie, it's fantastic and really well shot, really well acted and it's got loads of little cameos in it that you'll notice all the way through it. It's done by the guys that did Flight of the Concord, so you kind of roughly know what you're going to get with this movie. It is fantastic. I think it's one of the best city, like mockumentaries I've seen in a while and it's something that I'm going to watch again pretty soon. Number four, Obvious Child, directed by Gillian Rosberry and starry Jenny Slate. And it's basically about a 20-something who's a stand-up comic who uh, gets pregnant on a one-night stand and decides that she doesn't want the baby. It's a comedy about abortion. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's not probably the best subject that leans its way towards comedy, but it's more in her machinations and how she copes with what she's going through, the... Uh, start of a relationship possibly she's pregnant she doesn't want the child she's not in a position to be able to have the child she's got a comedy stand up where she starts talking about her feel thoughts and feelings on this it is a fantastic movie and I saw this movie uh, it must have been the start of the year it's recently come on Netflix and it's really stuck with me it's a really powerful and enjoyable movie Obvious Child is absolutely worth checking out Straight in at number three on my list is The Guest, a movie that I've watched a good half dozen times since it was released in theatres about a year ago. I think The Guest is one of the best movies I've seen in a long while and it continually grows in my estimations the more I watch it. I love the film. I think you should love the film. I think you should own the film. I think everybody should own the film. This is the movie where everybody went, Dan Stevens. <laughs> That's the next James Bond, totally. And now we're Bond getting ready to leave, maybe Daniel Craig's going to go. Could Dan Stevens be going to take over the role? This is the movie that everybody saw and thought he's the guy. So you should check it out and see if he's going to be the next Bond. This is about a soldier who introduces himself to a family, claiming to be a friend of a, their son who died in action. To tell you in the morning that would be criminal, but this is a fantastic movie with a absolutely Oscar worthy performance by Dan Stevens. It should have been but then Oscars don't go to genre movies like this. You'll never know where the movie's going to go. It is that good. I've shown it to a few people and not one of them knew what was coming next. It is an excellent excellent movie which you should definitely check out. And number two just appeared on Netflix. Can't believe it. Kung Fury. It's a 30 minute short movie but it is one of the most wackiest, inventive, crazy, hyper movies you will ever see in your entire life. I wish the thing was full length. I don't know if I could handle a full length version of this. It is that wacky. It is done in the 80s fashion, like an 80s action movie, and it makes no sense. The acting is wooden on purpose. Uh, the special effects are fantastic for a 30 minute short movie. Kung Fury, a 30 minute movie about a cop who travels back in time to kill Hitler. And along the way, discovers laser raptors, barbarians riding the backs of saber tooths, video game machines that come alive and try to shoot and kill people. It is just complete bonkers. But you know what? It's 30 minutes, it's fantastic and it's definitely worth your time. So now on to my number one. What's my number one movie of the month? What's the one movie on Netflix that you have to watch? For me, that is hands down easily Spring. A movie that I knew very little about and I just threw on and enjoyed the hell out of it. The story for Spring is very simple. It is about a, a man called Evan who's when his mother dies just goes into a tailspin and decides to just get out of the country, backpack through Europe and just try and pull himself together, figure out who he wants to be, what he wants to do, the usual thing. And along the way he bumps into this Italian woman called Louise who he starts to fall for, but it turns out that she's harbouring a primordial secret that could be his demise. It is best described as Before Sunrise meets a monster movie. It's not completely horror, 
it's not completely romance, it's somewhere in between and it's fantastic and it is pitch perfect and it's because it's, it's dichotomy of its genres, people aren't really going to dis discover this movie and that is an absolute shame because this movie deserves to be seen. I've watched it a couple of times, I love it, I think it is one of the best movies I have seen all year and if I'd seen it in the cinema it would be very close to be my number one movie of the year. It is that good a film and it's something that I can't suggest highly enough, you will love it. It looks amazing. It's a low budget but you would never tell. It looks Hollywood. It looks mainstream. It looks amazing. The character actors are fantastic and people that I'll be looking out for in other movies. The directors, um, it's a joint directing team and they did a fantastic job with this movie. I don't know how they pulled it off, I don't know how they came with the story, it's just so... It just seems to be tailored for me, it's my kind of movie, it's something I love 100% and I believe full heartedly that if you watch it, you will love it as much as I did. So that is my recommendation of the month. If you're only going to watch one of these movies, please make it spring, it is fantastic. And let me know what you thought about it as well if you do watch it. I'm not very, really finding people that have seen this movie and I want to talk about it more and more so if you've seen it let me know in the comments below and I will see you next month for another top 10. I'll see you next time on Man vs Film. Man vs Film.